To recap, I have been bullied by his family for years, and they essentially bullied us out of our wedding by withholding money at the last minute, so we had to cancel. I moved out indefinitely. He got a therapist and took time to focus on healing from his own issues and becoming a better partner for me if I came back in the future. I came back. We were very happy for the first two months, and he acknowledged my feelings, communicated in a healthy manner, and set firm boundaries with his family by going low contact. I found out during my break from him that his family threw a party on our failed wedding day and invited everyone but me. Keep in mind they thought we were still engaged and living together. He chose not to tell them the truth about me respecting myself and leaving a toxic dynamic they all created together because it would give them more to use against me. Fast forward to December and his terminally ill mom was getting sicker, which meant he wanted to spend more time with them. I supported that and encouraged it. I drove him to and from the hospital a few times when she was admitted, let him give her my memory foam pillow once she was back at home, and both my parents and I bought his family dinner on separate occasions. I was still unfortunately banned from his parents' house even though I agreed to visit his mom and indirectly tell her I forgave her and am truly sorry she is going through this. So he, his sisters, and their significant others lived at his parents' home for about two plus weeks and he would just come home around 11 p.m. to sleep at home with me, then leave the next morning again. She unfortunately passed away near the end of December and I continued supporting him being with his family the days following. Her funeral came around one, one, five weeks later, I was allowed to come, but my parents were not, and his family ignored my existence and made sure I felt rejected there. To my surprise, 80% of the people attending the private ceremony gave me dirty looks and also ignored my existence, but the 20% of kind people were genuinely kind and caring toward me. It was then I realized his family spread lies about me to everyone in the room to form an alliance against me. What a feeling of secondhand embarrassment it was to glare back at a bunch of 60 plus year olds scowling at me. I expressed my feelings of how I was treated to my fiance the next day, but he still went on to go spend the evening with his family. This brought me right back to the place I was with him in the past. He distanced himself for the last week but is now telling me he will be seeing his family during their hard times periodically, regardless of how he continues to enable their abuse toward me and hold nobody accountable or protect me, and I have to be okay with that. I said no, you can do what you feel you need to do, but I can no longer stay so miserable with you while you continue to let the exact issue fully impact our relationship after promising you wouldn't. I told him if he cannot cut his family out, then I will remove myself from this reality and move on with my life. He told me that's just me, being a controller and controlling who he can and can't see. Moral of the story is that I view this as, if your family can't accept me and be kind to me, then they are equally rejecting you, and you cannot have both sides in your life and live a double life, one being where I do not exist around your family. I think that defeats the purpose of marriage and choosing a life partner, and committing to them, being loyal to them. Just want to confirm with unbiased Redditors that I am not being insensitive like he's trying to make me out to be and I am justified in this decision for my own well-being. He told me that his grief outweighs anything else and this isn't about me and my feelings. I'll be sending this link to him once I hear your opinions since my feelings don't seem to be listened to when it's just coming from me. One more note. His grandparents used to feel like my safe space in my small circle of in-laws. They were always kind to me, but didn't know a single thing about why our wedding was canceled until I had to tell them while my fiancé sat there quietly. They were completely confused and had no idea. I always encouraged my fiancé to set up a lunch or dinner plan with them that I could attend, especially when I was not in contact with his immediate family. When I saw them at the funeral, they looked down at the ground and were reluctant to hug me when I went in for a hug. They didn't say a word to me. He and I both know they were given lies to turn against me as well. I also told him I'm more than happy to associate more frequently with the few cousins, aunts, uncles who were still nice to me, in case anyone thinks I'm trying to maliciously alienate him from his family. 
Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I think you did the right thing. You have to protect your sanity and you don't need to put up with the rude behavior of his family. I think as a partner, he should have had a conversation with his family and told them to treat you better because he loves you and you are important to him. The fact that he stayed quiet and never tried to defend you is kind of messed up. As for his comment on you being a controller about who he sees, that's BS. And he should know that considering how supportive you've been as his family goes through a hard time. You never told him he can't see his family, just gave a warning that you would remove yourself from the toxic situation if he won't be there for you in the way you need. Ball is in his court. If he actually loves you and wants you to be in his life, he'll step up and tell his family to cut the crap. Good luck with everything. I hope he does the right thing. Nobody deserves to put up with how they are treating you. Comment two. My husband's family is crazy toxic. His mother is emotionally and verbally hurtful and so manipulative it's truly borderline impressive. He put up with all of it because A, she made him question his self-worth and B, he had younger siblings he wanted to stay in touch with. For years, she treated me with surface level kindness and bit her tongue around me because I would always stand up for him. But of course, when we got engaged and she realized I was going to take him away, her switch flipped. The second that woman started her shoot on me, he cut her off cold. He did his best to stay in touch with his siblings and has managed that incredibly well but we haven't had contact with her in seven years. Seven years of dead silence the first time she verbally accosted me. That's how a partner should react when their family treats you like shoot. He won't cut them out, so it's time to cut him out. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the comments on my last post. It's been a rough couple of weeks since then, and I've got quite the update for you all. So, after the funeral, things got even more intense. My fiancé started spending even more time with his family, and I felt like I was living with a ghost. He'd come home late, barely talk, and then leave again early in the morning. It was like we were strangers passing in the night. I tried to be understanding because of his mom's passing, but it was tough. Now, remember how I mentioned his grandparents were my safe space? Well, that changed. After the funeral, they started acting cold towards me, just like the rest of his family. It was heartbreaking. I had no idea what lies they'd been told, but it was clear they believed them. I felt so alone. But here's where things get really crazy. One evening, my fiancé came home and said we needed to talk. He told me his family had been pressuring him to break things off with me. They blamed me for everything, even the stuff that was clearly not my fault. He said he defended me, but it was clear he was torn. I was shocked. I thought we were past all this drama. But then he dropped another bombshell. He said he wanted to try and mend things with his family, and that meant he'd have to spend even more time with them. I couldn't believe it. After everything, he still couldn't set boundaries. I was furious. We had a huge fight. I told him that if he couldn't stand up for me, then maybe we shouldn't be together. He accused me of trying to control him, just like his family said. I was so hurt. I wasn't trying to control him, I just wanted to be treated with respect. The next day, I decided to reach out to one of his aunts who had always been kind to me. I thought maybe she could shed some light on what was going on. We met for coffee and she was so sweet. She told me she didn't believe the lies and that she knew I was good for him. It was such a relief to hear that not everyone was against me. But then she said something that made my blood run cold. She told me that my fiancé's sisters had been spreading rumors about me, saying I was the reason their mom's health had declined. They said the stress of our relationship had made her sicker. I was appalled. How could they say something so cruel? I confronted my fiancé about it when he got home. He was shocked. He said he had no idea his sisters were saying those things. He was upset, but he still didn't seem to get how serious this was. He kept saying he needed to be there for his family during this tough time. I felt like I was at a breaking point. I loved him, but I couldn't keep living like this. I told him he had to make a choice. It was either me or his family. He got angry and said I was being unfair, but I stood my ground. I couldn't be in a relationship where I was constantly being attacked and disrespected. 
We didn't talk for days after that. It was the longest we'd ever gone without speaking. I was starting to think it was really over. But then, out of the blue, he came to me and apologized. He said he realized he'd been wrong to let his family treat me like that. He promised to set boundaries and stand up for me. I was hesitant, but I agreed to give him another chance. Things were good for a while. He started coming home earlier and actually talking to me. It felt like we were finally getting back on track. But then, last night, everything blew up again. His family had a get-together, and he went without telling me. I found out through a picture on social media. I was so upset. It felt like he was going back on his word. When he got home, I confronted him. He said it was a last-minute thing, and he didn't think it was a big deal. I told him it was a big deal to me. It felt like he was choosing them over me again. We were both so angry. He said I was overreacting and that he was just trying to keep the peace with his family. I said that wasn't good enough. We were supposed to be a team, and he wasn't acting like it. It was a huge fight, and we both said things we didn't mean. In the heat of the moment, he said he wished he'd never met me. I was devastated. I couldn't believe he would say something like that. But then this morning he came to me and said he was sorry. He said he didn't mean it and that he was just frustrated. He explained that his family had surprised him with a small memorial for his mom and he didn't want to cause a scene by leaving. He said he understood why I was upset and that he'd do better in the future. Mom keeps touching me and I slap her hand away. My sister says I'm an abuser. Oh boy, she's in for a surprise. This is something that has been going on for years. I hate it and I want them to stop, but they never listen to me. I have explained to them how it makes me feel and they don't care. I have told them to stop, but they don't care. I have done everything I can and they refuse to listen. How do I explain it in a way they will understand and respect? I actually don't mind physical touch from my friends and I love it from my boyfriend but I can't stand having my parents touch me. When my parents touch me, it doesn't feel good. It feels like a shock goes through my body, that I need to cower away, that I need to escape from them. It feels horrible, and afterwards I feel like red-hot anger goes through me because they don't listen to me asking them not to. My mom is especially guilty of this. She reaches out and pokes me, or grabs my butt, or will purposefully stand in my way and try to hug or kiss me. She'll stand in doorways I have to get through to try to touch me. I typically try to get as much distance as I can from her when I have to cross paths with her. My dad also does this sometimes, where I'll be sitting down and leans down to kiss the top of my head and rub my shoulder. He's also done the doorway thing too before, but only when he's drunk. That happened recently where my dad did that, and my mom saw the grimace on my face and gave me a smile she does when she tries to irritate me or get a reaction out of me. She then wrapped her leg around mine, locking it in place where I could not pull away. As soon as I started to try, she laughed at me and held me like that for a few more seconds before pulling away herself. Another time I think of when I talk about this is about around nine, eight months ago when I went dress shopping for my senior prom with my mom. I came out in a dress, then she started to touch and adjust it for me, and I kept telling her to stop and say no, but she didn't listen, so I slapped her hand away. She seemed mad after, but it got worse when we arrived home, and she told my sister, 26 years old, about it. My sister told me what I did was abuse, and even though I was telling her to stop, it doesn't justify what I did. I know what I did was bad, I'm sorry for it, and I have apologized to my mother about it already. I know it's not good to hit people, and I would never do it under normal circumstances, but my sister just did not care and kept reiterating that what I did was hurtful, and I should feel ashamed for it. Not to mention, it's hypocritical for my sister to even say that considering she spanks my niece and my nephew. So it's abuse when I do it, but it's not when you do it. She says it'll be different when I'm a parent, and I'll see where she's coming from, but I really don't. It makes me feel incredibly horrible inside when I hear them crying, even over minuscule things. I feel rage, I feel dreadful, I feel fearful, I feel anxious, I feel weak, and I feel helpless. I could not imagine hitting my own child who is helpless and learning the world around them and teaching them early on that their parents are not safe. 
They wouldn't want to be hit. So why the frick would you hit your own children? I don't know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I went on a side tangent there. I feel a lot of things regarding everything I've written and I don't know what to do. I've purposefully made distance. I've explained to them both, solo and together, how it makes me feel and how I don't like it and wish they would respect that. My mom typically flips it saying, well, what about my boundaries? What if I need to touch you? Why can't you respect that? And I have even used physical force to get space away. And they don't care. Is there anything I can do that would have them care at all and get it through them? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, when it comes to your body, your mother's needs do not take priority over your needs. That is a horrible thing to say to your child. In fact, that teaches children that the needs of others supersedes their body rights. Seriously sounds like something a rapper would say. And it was not hurtful to smack your mother's hands away after telling her multiple times to stop touching you. Stop means stop, and no means no. That was self-defense. Take the mom and dad out of the equation. How would people around you react if you weren't related to them? Your body, your right to choose who touches you. Them being physically aggressive with you is abuse. I would get out of your house as soon as you're able and get a lock on the door, like one of the chains, easy to install on the inside. Comment two, no. What your parents do is hurtful. What you did was justifiable self-defense. What I have just read is truly horrible. If you are still at school, I guess not. Tell a teacher or counselor. Next time, scream, scream, scream. Make a massive noise. Ideally, you want the neighbors to hear, because public shame is all that will stop them. Do not hesitate to use force to defend your body if necessary. I don't suppose there is some sane relative or friend you could go live with, because you need to get the frick out of there. And one day, when possible, you are going to need some therapy for this. This is just horrible. Now for the update. Hey everyone, it's been a week since my last post, and let me tell you, a lot has happened. I thought things couldn't get any more intense, but boy, was I wrong. So after the last incident with my mom and dad, I decided to have another serious talk with them. I sat them down and laid it all out, how their touching makes me feel trapped and disrespected. I thought maybe this time they'd get it, but instead, my mom got defensive, saying she's my mother and should be allowed to show affection. My dad just sat there, not saying much, but I could tell he agreed with her. The next day, I was in the kitchen making a sandwich when my mom came in. She tried to wrap her arms around me from behind, and I lost it. I yelled at her to stop, louder than I ever have before. She stepped back, looking shocked, and then she did something I never expected. She started crying, saying she didn't understand why I was pushing her away, and that she felt like she was losing her daughter. I felt terrible seeing her cry, but I also felt angry because it seemed like she was trying to make me feel guilty. I left the room without saying anything else. Later that night, my sister came over. She pulled me aside and started lecturing me about how I should apologize to our mom. She said I was being too sensitive and that I needed to get over it. I reminded her about the time she spanked my niece and nephew and asked her how that was any different. She just rolled her eyes and said that was different because she's their mother and it's her job to discipline them. I couldn't believe she was still using that excuse. It's like she doesn't see the hypocrisy in her actions. I tried to explain to her how it's not about discipline, it's about consent and respecting personal boundaries, but she wouldn't listen. The next day, things got even worse. I was in my room when I heard my parents talking in the living room. They didn't know I could hear them. My mom was telling my dad that she thought I was being influenced by my boyfriend, that he was turning me against them. My dad agreed and said they should invite him over for dinner to talk some sense into him. I was fuming. Not only were they blaming my boyfriend for something that had nothing to do with him, but they were also planning to confront him about it. I decided right then that I needed to do something drastic. I called my boyfriend and told him everything. He was just as upset as I was and agreed that we needed to stand up to my parents together. We made a plan for him to come over for dinner the next night. When he arrived, my parents were all smiles, acting like nothing was wrong. But as soon as we sat down to eat, 
my mom started making snide comments about how some people were too sensitive and needed to learn to accept love from their family. My boyfriend stayed calm and asked her why she thought it was okay to force physical affection on someone who clearly didn't want it. My mom tried to argue, but my boyfriend was relentless. He pointed out that if anyone else did what they were doing, it would be considered harassment. My dad tried to jump in, saying that they were just trying to be good parents, but my boyfriend shut that down too. He said that being a good parent means listening to your child and respecting their wishes. By the end of the night, my parents were speechless. They didn't apologize, but I could tell they were starting to realize they might be in the wrong. My boyfriend and I left soon after, and we haven't spoken to my parents since. Boyfriend and I took shrooms, but he had a severe reaction and grabbed me. He also mentioned a girl named Rebecca, and I'm pissed. Oh boy, he passed out, and I found out who Rebecca is. This all just happened last night, so I apologize if this is all over the place. Basically, my boyfriend, who is 23 years old, and I, who am 22 years old, did shrooms last night. While they had little effect on me, they hit my boyfriend like a truck. In the year we've been dating, he has never acted like this. He was completely incoherent and occasionally would scream really loudly. He would also grab me pretty hard and pinch my arms for some reason. He was throwing himself back and forth on the bed and it was honestly kind of scary to watch. It was getting pretty late and I figured the best thing I could do was try and put him to sleep. So, I held him and told him it was time to go to bed. It felt like talking to a wall. He didn't acknowledge my presence for hours and I just kept trying to calm him down as best as I could. Unfortunately, that's when I started to peek. While all of this was happening, he grabbed my hand and rubbed it on his personal area. At this point, I was still much more sober than him and didn't feel comfortable doing anything intimacy. So I tried to pull my hand away, but he had a very firm grip. I was really tired and didn't want to fight him on it. He was just rubbing my hand on the outside of his clothes while moaning and then moaned, Oh yes, yes, Rebecca. I am not Rebecca. He's never mentioned anyone named Rebecca before. When he said that, my entire body reacted and I pushed him away from me as much as I could. I asked who that was, but he just got quiet and started muttering to himself. I had no idea what he was saying. I figured he was still pretty messed up, so I kept trying to calm him down and put him to sleep. Eventually, he passed out and woke up a few hours later, not remembering a whole bunch. I didn't bring up the name because he still seemed a bit out of it and had to get home so he could go to work the next morning. Now here I am feeling very conflicted and upset. I have a lot of trust issues because I've been cheated on many times in the past. This is my first healthy relationship with someone who genuinely goes above and beyond for me constantly and is the sweetest guy I have ever met. But him saying that put a lot of other things into perspective. He hasn't told me he loves me or told his family that he lives with about me. He constantly has to make up excuses about where he's at and who he's with. I'm just rambling now and I'm sorry. I just really care about him and I don't know what to do. Do we break up? Is it possible that it's nothing and he was just tripping out of his mind? I asked him to come over after work today but haven't gotten a response yet. So here I am, Reddit. I don't know what to think or how to feel. I just feel sick to my stomach. Update, we talked. Rebecca is a girl he went to college with and he realized while on shrooms that he still has feelings for her. So I'm single now. I'm gonna keep telling myself this is for the best and everything happens for a reason, right? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, they are literally hallucinogens. If it was booze or pot, that's one thing. But shrooms have you seeing things that aren't there. Maybe he was having a hallucination of Rebecca Remesian giving him a hand job. Who knows? This sounds like an indication that he should not do shrooms again. Taking it as anything else would be foolish. Edit. That said, his other behavior completely unrelated to the shrooms is a problem, and you should work on that, or break up because of that. Not because of what he did in what sounds like a severely altered state of mind. Comment 2. Dude, when I took shrooms, I couldn't even tell time. I thought English was a fake and made up language because it sounded incoherent to me, and I thought my friend was a frog. 
I saw my own vomit move. Another time when I was on acid, I was walking back and forth on a bench mumbling incoherent shoot thinking it was riddles. I thought I was the Cheshire Cat for Frick's sake. He probably was on another planet. Rebecca might not even exist. Edit, damn, I saw the update, lol mayo. Now for the update, hey Reddit, it's been a rough three days since I last updated you all about the shroom incident with my now ex-boyfriend. I've been processing a lot, and let me tell you, it's been a whirlwind of emotions. But I promised an update, so here it goes. After my ex admitted he still had feelings for Rebecca, I was devastated. I couldn't believe that the guy who I thought was the sweetest person ever was hung up on someone else. It felt like a punch to the gut, especially since I've been cheated on before. I thought I had finally found someone different. The day after our breakup, I was a mess. I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, and kept replaying everything in my head. But then, something unexpected happened. I got a text from my ex's sister, Emily. We had gotten pretty close over the year, and she had always been supportive of our relationship. She asked if I was okay and said she needed to talk to me about something important. We met up at a local coffee shop, and Emily looked like she was carrying the weight of the world on her shoulders. She told me that she had overheard her brother talking to their mom about the shroom incident. Apparently, he had been freaking out because he thought he had ruined everything with me. But that wasn't the jaw-dropping part. Emily revealed that Rebecca was actually her brother's ex-girlfriend from college, and she had passed away in a car accident a year before he and I met. I was in shock. My ex had never mentioned Rebecca, let alone that she had died. Emily explained that her brother had never really gotten over Rebecca's death and that he had been seeing a therapist to deal with his grief. The shrooms must have brought up all those unresolved feelings. Hearing this, I didn't know how to feel. I was angry that he had kept this from me, but at the same time my heart ached for him. He was dealing with so much pain, and I had no idea. The next day, my ex showed up at my door. He looked terrible, like he hadn't slept since our breakup. He apologized for everything and explained about Rebecca. He said he understood if I couldn't forgive him, but that he missed me and still cared about me deeply. We talked for hours, and it was one of the most intense conversations I've ever had. He told me about his memories with Rebecca, how they had planned a future together, and how her death had shattered him. It was the first time I had seen him so vulnerable. But here's the twist, Reddit. As we were talking, his phone kept buzzing. He ignored it at first, but it was relentless. Finally, he checked it and his face went pale. It was his therapist calling about an emergency session. He had to go and I was left alone with my thoughts. I realized that as much as I cared about him, we both had a lot of healing to do. He needed to work through his grief, and I needed to work on my trust issues. We couldn't be what the other person needed right now. So, we decided to take a break. Not a breakup, but a pause. We agreed to focus on ourselves, with no promises about the future. It was bittersweet. I still loved him, but I knew this was the right thing to do. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.